so I feel like I'm a little bit late to do this, and it's something I promised myself I wouldn't do to talk about politics and simple opinion pieces on this channel anymore, but A, it's that important, it really is, and B, I sort of lost sight of why I started this channel in the first place, which is not to become a YouTuber, it was because I wanted to have a certain voice on the internet, and I think it was the right move to switch more towards science, communication, educational content, and focus on sharing ideas where I actually have some expertise, rather than trying to have an outsized voice in just sort of having opinions that everybody has opinions on. But this is something where I want to add my two cents to a very large pile of people that are saying the same thing, and for very good reason, which is just do not let democracy end at this, okay? And I, I do not want to be a partisan hack here, but yes, Donald Trump is that big a threat to democracy and to freedom, and you know, I, I have been, you know, sort of just a mainline liberal my whole life, and that's probably not going to change, but, and I keep saying, I, I look forward to many, many decades to come of debating conservatives as well as debating people that I have disagreements with more on my own side about exactly what policies are best and which candidates are best qualified to implement them and, you know, getting upset about, you know, things not going our way in different little ways and all of those things. And I look forward to a future where we can still do that. And yes, Donald Trump really does represent a threat to our basic ability to have a voice in our governance. He is not like other conservative candidates. He's not even really a conservative. He is a somebody that is about one thing and one thing only, and that is the advancement of his own power and his own wealth at the expense of absolutely everything else. I am not just talking about January 6th. I am not just talking about his insane tweets. I am talking about every goal he has ever pursued. Like... If you like some of the policies he implemented, I am happy to debate those policies for years to come. I might even advocate for some of them. But if we lose our ability to choose our leaders, if we lose our ability to have basic things like freedom of speech and freedom of the press and freedom of assembly, and if we lose the ability to elect people, None of that is going to be swayed by anything we say or do. And it really is that dire. I want to believe that even if he wins the election, we can make it through another four years. But I just don't know, and I do not want to find out. People will often sort of downplay it by saying, you know, don't look at what he says, look at what he does. Well, first of all, I think what somebody says when they are an elected member of our government actually matters. And second, I would say, well, look at, A, yes, look at the things he did do, and B, look at the things that uh, he tried to do, because there's a lot of things where, yeah, Something bad did not happen, but the only reason it didn't happen is because checks and balances and other well-meaning people, including some members of his own party, managed to stop him. You know, I again, the obvious example is January 6th, where he tried to just ignore a democratic election, but that is not the only time that he has tried to do that. If you look right at the very beginning of his first term in office, he tried to just blatantly violate the First Amendment before multiple federal judges said that, no, you cannot bar people from immigration on the basis of their religion. And 
there's countless more examples where he tried to do something horrific and the only reason it didn't happen was the constitution is actually pretty good and there's a lot of people on both sides who still care about you know basic human rights and our constitution and the democratic process and i'd like to think that those things will stop him again even if he wins but I do not want to find out, and I am begging anybody that happens to see this that is in a position to do anything, don't let it happen. I live in California. I know where my electoral votes are going. The odds that this reaches somebody in a swing state and actually either persuades them to vote when they were going to stay home or somehow even persuades them to vote for Kamala when they previously weren't going to, very low, but I know I have to try because this is just about the only thing I can do. I don't have a whole lot of money. I gave her campaign, like, a tiny amount, and I mean, like, 20 bucks, because I really don't have a whole lot of money. I voted for her, but I live in a state where that's not going to make much of a difference, and this is last minute, and I told myself I wasn't going to talk about politics, but I am begging you, if you are in any position to possibly tip the scales in her favor, please, please vote for Kamala Harris. I look forward to many decades of voting for a wide array of candidates and on a wide array of issues and debating people about the best policies and the best candidates, and I look forward to a future where we still get to cast our ballots and a future where it still means something and a future where we can still discuss ideas freely without fear of a dictator using military force on every opponent that dares to oppose him. And he has said multiple times he wants to do that, and he has indicated on several occasions that he will do the things he says he does if he gets the chance. Do not let that happen.